Hi, this is Professor of Photography Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number eight of the History of Photography podcast. Our topic for this episode is the photographer Sergei Mikhailovich Prokudin Gorsky. Sergei Mikhailovich Prokudin Gorsky, a mouthful. Uh, I'll stick with Prokudin Gorsky for the remainder of the podcast. Prokudin Gorsky was born in 1863 and died in 1954. And the photographs that Prokudin Gorsky made offer a vivid portrait of a very completely lost world. The Russian Empire, the Russian Empire on the eve of World War I and the coming Russian Revolution. In this slide, we see Prokudin Gorsky in a portrait. Uh, that's a detail of him coming on screen here. Uh, you'll notice that this image is in color, and it's the fact that Prokudin Gorsky's images are in color that give them a big part of their appeal, as they were made before color photography was widely practiced or known, uh, because Prokudin Gorsky was a pioneer of color photography. He grew up in a small Russian town and in the late 1880s went off to St. Petersburg, where he enrolled in St. Petersburg State Institute of Technology. There he studied chemistry under Dmitry Mendeleev. He also studied music and painting at the Imperial Academy of Arts. It's not certain whether it was this study that formed his interest in photography and in photochemistry, but in 1902 he went to Berlin to work with Professor Adolf Meitti, a chemist and an early expert in the tricolor photo process. The tricolor photo process, the concept of this had been explored before, most notably by the English physicist James Clerk Maxwell, but it's with Prokudin Gorsky that we see an applied approach to the technique. The idea is that during this time period that Prokudin Gorsky was making these photographs, uh, the late 19th and early 20th century, uh, there was only black and white photography available. Uh, black and white emulsion was the only type available at the time. So a single image yielded a single black and white photograph. But if three images were made instead of one, with each one being made through a filter, three separate images, one through red, one through green, and one through blue, what you got was color separations. And those color separations, one image made through red, one image made through green, and one image made through blue, filtered out the way color was recorded by the black and white emulsions, three separate images. Those three separate images could then be combined uh, to make a single color photograph. Uh, and here we have uh, the Emir of Bukhara, uh, a rather fierce-looking uh, fellow. Of course, once the image was made, it was impossible to make any sort of a print of those pictures, so Prokudin Gorsky employed a three-lensed projector with each lens fitted with a red, a green, and a blue filter, and then each of these color separations was projected through its correspondingly filtered lens, and therefore the full color image would appear in projection on a projection screen. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is what you see here on screen, on the right-hand side of uh, the, the slide, is the image as it would be uh, from Prokudin Gorsky's time, uh, with the uh, three images superimposed by hand. Contemporary digital technology has allowed these images to be more accurately uh, uh, sort of superimposed on top of one another, and so we can see a much more accurate rendition of color. Uh, and uh, so here we are looking at uh, this color image. Now I'll pause here and say that we should note that uh, not only is recording red, green, and blue an important technology of uh, film photography from the 1930s through the present day, but it's also an important part of what we do in digital photography today, both in recording with digital camera sensors that record images in red, green, and blue, and also in viewing on our monitors and on mobile device screens and anything else that we use to view 
uh, our images with television screens and so forth. Uh, and of course, also just, you know, re sort of going back here to the idea that color film technology uses red, green, and blue to record. So, uh, Prokhodin Gorsky was uh, ahead of his time uh, with other pioneers of color photography. Uh, so uh, I've got a couple other examples here of the way these three color separations worked out into uh, final images. Uh, and here we have one of the more uh, recent digitally enhanced images. And then uh, here we have an image that has uh, not been digitally enhanced, but still is remarkable in the quality of color. You'll notice, though, uh, a little bit of uh, sort of misregistration on the model's hand here. And I've got another slide that sort of examines this in some greater detail. Because one of the problems was is that if each image was made at a slightly different time, any kind of a subject matter that was moving was not going to be recorded in the exact same spot with the red exposure and the green exposure and the blue exposure. So here we have this uh, photograph of a man standing on a, on a raft, and a detail here shows us those artifacts of the different exposures of each uh, color through the red, green, and blue filters. So we get sort of multicolored water and yet a solid uh, gray or black coat uh, worn uh, by uh, by this guy in, in the photograph. So uh, it wasn't a perfect technology, and yet armed with this technology, Prokhodin Gorsky formulated an incredibly ambitious plan. His plan was to create a photographic survey of the Russian Empire, and that plan won the support of Tsar Nicholas II. So here we have Tsar Nicholas II on the left-hand side of the slide. The Tsar had become interested in uh, Prokhodin Gorsky's project when he saw a photograph that Prokhodin Gorsky had made of the great Russian writer Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy, of course, is best known for his two long novels, War and Peace from 1869 and Anna Karenina from 1877. So there is uh, Prokhodin Gorsky's photograph of Tolstoy on the right-hand side of the screen. And it's important to note also that Nicholas II was the last czar of Russia under Romanov rule. And he was the last czar of Russia uh, because he ended up uh, abdicating uh, because of his handling of Bloody Sunday, uh, which essentially kicked off the Russian Revolution and also World War I. And so uh, he was uh, uh, a sort of uh, one of the last of the great uh, Russian uh, uh, czars. So, uh, and yet his support of Prokhodin Gorsky was really what prompted this project to be made. And what Prokhodin Gorsky wanted to do was he wanted to use color photography to document the Russian Empire in a very systematic way. He had this ambitious product whose ultimate goal, or its ultimate goal, was to educate the school children of Russia. That was his uh, notion and partially how he sold the project uh, to Nicholas II, uh, to educate the school children of Russia with his optical color projections, projecting these images to groups of school children of the vast and diverse history and culture, and very importantly, the modernization of the empire. His subjects ranged from the medieval churches and monasteries of old Russia to the railroads and factories of an emerging industrial power uh, to the daily life and work of Russia's diverse population. Tsar Nicholas's support was so great that he gave Prokhodin Gorsky clearance to visit and photograph many areas of Russia that had been off limits to most Russians. And he also had a special railroad car built with a dark room in it to help facilitate the photographer's work. Prokhodin Gorsky left Russia in 1918, going first to Norway and then to England before settling eventually in France. By then, the Tsar and his family had been murdered and the empire that Prokhodin Gorsky had so carefully documented had been destroyed. His unique images of Russia on the eve of revolution recorded on these tricolor glass plates were eventually purchased by the United States Library of Congress in 1948 from Prokhodin Gorsky's heirs. 
So over a period of about six years, Prokudin Gorsky took some 10,000 photographs, systematically chronicling Russia's rich culture and its industry and its architecture. And it's with these remarkable uh, reproductions that we have from the U.S. Library of Congress, and I'll link to those images on the uh, Library of Congress website on the photohistory.jeffcurdo.com website. Um, but uh, Sergei Mikhailovich Prokudengorsky, a tremendous pioneer of color photography and one who recorded an important time in the history of Russia and in the history of the world. So thanks for joining me on this episode of the History of Photography podcast, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to check out the History of Photography class sessions available on the web at photohistory.jeffcurto.com or in the podcast feed. And while you're on the web, take a look at my other podcast, cameraposition.com, a podcast about the creative side of photography.